Uh, maybe first, first, good morning to everyone again, the ones that I may not have seen earlier. It's a very, very tricky encounter, more especially in the final stages of the preseason training, where you, you are not too sure how far and how long the players can go. But uh, we believe the team is, is prepared very well. They've been looking very good in all the friendlies that we played. We have devised some more build-up schemes, worked a little bit harder on our counter-pressing and our high press. Uh, we believe the team that we are playing against uh, will come at us because the good thing about a match like this when two big teams are playing, you don't expect anyone to be sitting back, which will make the encounter a very interesting encounter. And if that is the case, I, I, I believe we will have a spectacle of a match because both teams are, have, uh, have reinforced and uh, they are looking forward to us seeing some of their new players. But the truth of the matter is I'm confident that Sundowns probably, it's, I think it's seven years now I've been here. We've struggled with this cup and we, we are going all out to try and, and make sure that we we, we finally become the winners of the cup, but that st starts with the first step against Kaiser Chiefs. A very difficult encounter considering the number of new players that they have brought in. Very difficult to profile who they are going to be using on this one, considering that uh, in the calling plate label, they did not use some of these uh, new signings. So one is looking forward to a very good uh, encounter, I must say. Thank you very much for that, Coach. Uh, let me take the first question. Uh, Mark, listen. Good morning, and thank you very much. And good morning, Coach. Um, may I ask two, if you don't mind? One is, why have you guys struggled with the MTN8 over the last 14 years? Is it that you are sort of late risers in a, in a way? You're kind of difficult to get out of bed in the morning in a football sense for the new season. Second question is, Baxter has always been the sort of king of what he used to call transition or, or we know as counter-attack, do you expect that that's going to be the Chiefs' approach again? Who will who will win possession for them in midfield? Who will be the Let Solignani passing the ball through the middle? And who's going to be the finisher, in your opinion? The, the honest truth is that in the seven years that I've been here, there are many scenarios that uh, were presented, which is why we did not win this cup. Uh, one scenario... At some point, we, we had too many signings and we, we tried to, to play them in the first match. Uh, I think we lost to Platinum Stars uh, because the team had not gelled properly. Another scenario was when we were playing uh, MTN 8 at the same time as we were continuing and in the latter stages of the Champions League, I remember when we lost to Vets in the final, we were unfortunate on that one because we also had Zesco semi-final away from home. We had too many issues that were making uh, the team not to be as fresh as one would have liked. And another scenario was when we bombed out because of Cape Town City, which I think on that one, we were, we were just unfortunate because there were very serious wrong offside calls that were made in Cape Town. And that it uh, that compromised us. But uh, the truth of the matter is, it is one cup that, in one way or the other, we've always we, we've always struggled to 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 win over the past seven years I've been here. And I, I hear the number of years that we are you are mentioning even before I was here, and that that raises eyebrows. But it's 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 a cup that we all know, and now we've been fighting for it. And I don't want to lie, even Coach Pizzo has been trying his best to, to, to win this cup. But for whatever reason, it is one cup that has always been very tricky for us in many ways. But uh, after a very long time, the team had a proper preseason this time around. And we are hoping that we, we will be able to, to stamp our authority from the beginning of the season. And that is just a hope because at this stage, nothing has been proven. Thank you, Coach. I'll move on. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, on, on Stuart Baxter and this transitional game, I was hoping you are not going to ask that question because I, I'm, I'm thinking based on the, the talk that he, he made in the media that 
He's also coming out guns blazing. Is they, they want to reassume their status of being a victim in the country because uh, the, the transitional game and the counter-attacking game means you are not making a lot of initiatives to, to take the game to yourself. And uh, we know for a fact he is very dangerous on transition. And already in my mind, I'm thinking of players like Sekota, like Keegan Dolly, uh, but a very big contrast on, on Nukovic because now they've got a striker that is a box striker. And if they want to play a counter-attacking game, then it means he must start from the halfway line to come out. And I don't think that is his strength. So that will be a bit of a compromise in terms of the structure, which is why I think they might want to come out and play in and around our box, which would uh, make the, the contest very interesting. But you are very right. They, they've got very useful players on counter-attack, like the ones that I've mentioned. Kama also is a factor in that space. Uh, in the midfield, they've signed quite well. Nange has got the pass. Uh, the boy that was at Vets, uh, Cole Alexander has got the pass as well. Uh, the Ngobo young boy of Chiefs has got the pass, but it's a big, it's a big question as to who exactly are they going to use in that midfield because they must also try to have players that can help them defensively in that space, uh, which brings Katsande into, into the play, which brings Plom into the play, which brings uh, even an element of Parker who has done very well in the midfield, uh, who can also play up top and be useful on counter attacks. So it's gonna be very interesting because at this stage it's very difficult to know what will they do. But what one thing we know is that Nukovic is, is a very important player for them and he must play. And if they want to play a counter-attacking game, then Nukovic will forever be late into the box. But if they want to play uh, with a proper build-up schemes, because uh, Stuart can do that. He's a very good coach. I've got a lot of respect for him. So it's it's going to be interesting how he approaches the game. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's move on to Mazola. Thanks, Fatu. Um, morning, coach. Uh, just also... On, on, on Coach Stewart, you mentioned, you know, the difficulty of, of profiling them in the sense that they've got um, a, few, a few new signings. But given that he's coached Supersport, he's coached Bafana, he's coached Chiefs before, is it, does it make it a little bit easier to, to, to profile, so to speak? Because maybe his, his, his blueprint is a bit of an open book, so to speak. And the other question, just on uh, Ricardo Nascimento, what's the decision? Are you going to register him um, and hope that he recovers and comes back? Yeah, in, in terms of uh, knowing the coach and what is strongest, at, uh, Stuart Baxter is one of the strongest coaches on set pieces. That is one area he will never compromise. He's very strong there. And he does have the ammunition for that type of a game in Nukovic in the Matoho, in Cardoso, Katsande, and Pahlele, if he's, he's playing, deciding to play him at right back. Uh, he's got quite a, a reasonable number of players that can help. Even Nange is a factor in that space, to be honest. And also, one of his major components in the game is a transitional game, uh, which is counter-attacks, not necessarily a lot of break attacks because his teams are not very strong in counter pressing and pressing from the top, but uh, they always give themselves that space behind your defense. And that is basically where you would expect him to be. But looking at the profile of the players that he have, and one, one in particular being Nukovic, that uh, would not be as lethal when he has to play a counter attacking game. He's more lethal when he's in and around the box a lot. And that is something that you will have to make very hard decisions because for a proper, proper counter-attacking game, a Kama, Keegan, Sekota combination would be a very dangerous combination or a Parker, uh, Kama, Sekota combination would be less than on a counter-attacking game. But uh, it has got some compromises defensively. It also has some compromises uh, on set pieces because it means they are losing one of their key players aerially. So it's a, it's a very interesting encounter, but we know for a fact that his main, main approach would be 
set pieces, he's very dangerous. Even on throw-ins, he's very dangerous. Uh, he's got a lot of schemes in that space. Uh, also on, on transition. Then on open play, building the attack from the back and coming at us, uh, he does have the players to do that in the Chiefs team that he has now. So it makes it a little bit tricky, even for him, to make a decision as to how do I want to play. Do I want to play as an underdog in this game or do I want to play as a big team? Because uh, Keza Chiefs is a very big team. And from the signings they've made, you can see that they, really want, they want to reclaim that position as a big team. Thank you. On Nasir Ricardo, coach? Or on Nascimento, yeah, Nascimento, we don't have any issues with him, uh, but it's a little bit tricky to sign him before we know that he has fully recovered. It's a little bit of a, a banana skin. Eh? So we, we, we are waiting probably till the last minute to make a call in that space, but uh, we are optimistic that he is probably likely to, to come back earlier because uh, from the, the procedure that he's been doing and the rehab that he's been doing, He's looking very good. So we are optimistic that we might have him. Thank you, Coach uh, Karabo. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fatu. Uh, good morning, Coach. Uh, compliments of the new season uh, to you and your club. Uh, uh, Coach, I just wanted to find out on two quick two quick ones. Uh, the first one being Sfison Gubain, who obviously is a uh, Mamelodi born player. Uh, how is he looking and training? How is he adapting to new ways of doing things? I mean, Sunhouse is also very demanding. Uh, how is he looking at training, coach? And uh, the second one, I think uh, this one might be a bit tricky for you. Uh, a lot has been said, a lot has been done in terms of Gaston Serino. How is he looking mentally, coach? Is he is he now uh, looking to, to to go again? I mean, there's there's been a lot been said about him on social media in regards to Sundown's <laughs> friend. If he wants to leave, let him leave. But for you, coach, having seen him over the last couple of weeks, how is he, how is he or where is he mentally? Thank you. Uh, maybe let me start with uh, the Gaston Serenio one. Uh, to be honest, when he came back from Urukai, he, he looked very interested. He looked committed to, to play within the club. He looked serious about his training and all that. But unfortunately, he, he got a knock in his knee, which was a great one. He's back in training this week, but... Uh, we have not really seen him, how is he going to come up? But the truth of the matter, in terms of the outlook, it does not look like he, he, wants, to, he wants to leave. But uh, I think the club is, is, is very clear also in that space that if he has to leave and people are still interested, they must just bring an offer to the table and the club is very considerate of whatever that might happen because the club does not want to kill uh, Gaston's career. That is very important from the chairman of the club to the board uh, and everybody else around the club, even to us, the technical team. If he no longer wants to play for Sundowns and people are coming with uh, good offers on the table, the club is willing to take them. But what is, is not looking good sometimes is when there is too much talk of, of what is likely to happen, but nothing really happens on the table. So at this stage, I think it's a wait and see situation, but in terms of the commitment, the boy looks good and I don't have any issues with him and the coaches are very happy with him to be honest. Uh, on the second one, which one was the second one? Sfison uh, Gobeni, Mamelodi born boy, adapting to the club. Okay. Sfiso <clears throat> is, a, is a very talented football, footballer. Very, it's gonna be very important for Sundown's attack very, very important in the Sundowns attack because offensively, everybody knows what he's capable of. Uh, be it the opposition is compact, be it the opposition is, uh, is, uh, is stretched, is, is very useful. One against one, he's got, he's got something to do. Uh, his crossing ability can improve a little bit, but uh, he gets in those spaces and is very dangerous. He can even score goals in, in those channels and he's got a very good cutback from him. Defensively, he's still finding it a little bit difficult, and I will tell you why, because uh, many a times at Celtics, he was playing as a wingback. Uh, he was not playing as a fullback, where there are two center backs, and he is expected to fulfill all the duties in the wide channel defensively, one against one against the opponent, and shifting from one side to the other, defending with an L if needs be and the players are trying to attack the space in front of our defense. He, he's got a lot to learn in that space, but 
the possibilities of him learning that and coming out right are very high because he's very intelligent and it's coachable. So we are optimistic that he's going to be very important for us. Uh, even when we signed him, we knew we, we are looking for the future of Sundowns. Obviously, he will get game time this season. It does not mean we are looking for the future, but he's not going to play. But the competition is very rife between, between him, uh, Lyle Lakey, and Divine Lunga. It's a, it's a very interesting competition, I must say. And uh, it has awakened even Lyle Lakey. He's looking very good. And Divine, unfortunately, had a knock. He'll be joining the team this week, so we are not too sure where exactly he is. But uh, I must say, it's a it's a very good addition to the club. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we're now taking the last round of questions, uh, starting with Tsepang. Uh, Coach, good morning. Tsepang from Sokala Duma. Um, <clears throat> two questions. Langaman, I mean, um, he's been there for so many years. Um, just for you, just describe the time that he had at the club and seeing him leave. What was that feeling like for you? And with Klompo Kekana, um, is he staying? Is he going? Okay, let me start with Langaman. Uh, Langaman has served Sundowns with, uh, with a lot of dignity and honor. He has been very in instrumental in our attacking play. Uh, he created a lot of very good moments for the team over the years. He has even scored some very crucial goals for us. And he's a very good professional, a very good boy, uh, liked by probably everyone in the club. But uh, it was always going to be difficult for, for us, if we are good human beings, to want to keep him in the club when he's not getting regular game time. When there are people that were knocking on the door, asking for him to, to go in and, and, and get regular game time. And it was a very fair decision, in my, in my opinion, from the coaches, from the club in general, to, to make a call to say, because it is in his interest to continue playing regularly, let him go and play regularly, because last season he, re, he barely had a game, and the few games that he played, to be honest, he did not play bad, but uh, unfortunately, last season, Lyle Lake also had some very good moments. And uh, on Shlompo, Shlompo is still with us. Uh, we love him. He's our legend. He's our captain. Had a very good preseason training, good leadership. Uh, all is looking very positive. But the only part that is 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 always going to be an issue again is the amount of games that uh, he's he, he got last season compared to the the number of games that he's likely to get this season, and that is a, a very serious catch twenty two situation because we like him, we are happy with him, but what if he does not want to, to, to play less games? Because the truth of the matter is, it's not about us only, it's also about him. If he wants to, to, to stay and help us in the change room, he's a very important player, uh, so be it. But the truth of the matter is, at this stage, uh, as a club, we are happy with him. And uh, we, we, we are also wary of his wishes as well. So we will, we will have to listen to him. Whatever comes from him, we will take it very seriously. But he has to be treated with a lot of respect uh, because he has served the club. He's probably one captain that has lifted more trophies than any other captain in the club. Thank you. OK, uh, we'll take the last two questions, uh, Velile and then uh, Fran Rana. Can I just ask that you keep it to one question because we only have five more minutes left. Uh, Velile, you go first. Um, good morning, Coach. Um, tomorrow is also a draw for uh, the CAF Champions League, um, a prelims and first round. Uh, I guess by now you have finalized your registration uh, I've seen also here locally, I think some spots are ranging between 35 to 40. Uh, I know that Kef has got a limit of 40. Have you worked out on how many players you need um, for both campaigns um, this season? We, we are in a very unfortunate situation because we happen to play more, more matches than probably any other team in the league. But uh, one big issue is the money, how to manage the squad. 
last season we were a little bit fortunate because of a, a very rife COVID situation that forced us to play almost every every member of the squad. But this season we we think the situation is slightly getting better uh, based on the tests that we have done over over time. So we we are beginning to think that it might be a little bit better because sometimes it's not always proper to have a very big squad uh, that you have maybe eight or nine or 10 players in training that are outside when you are doing your tactical work and you must now compensate and try and bring everybody in and give everybody a chance. So that makes it very difficult for us. But as coaches and what is happening at the moment, we, we are around 30 to 32 players that we, we have within the team and possibility maybe of settling at 30 or 32, but at this stage, it's, very, it's a little bit difficult because it's difficult to take very tough decisions and COVID is also hovering around you because the reason why even KEF allowed us to have about 40 players was based on the fact that from time to time you lose players. I remember last year when we went to play Golden Arrows, I think we were without 11 of our players uh, in the game that we played away at Golden Arrows. And we fortunately, because we had a big squad, we, we maneuvered and we were able to, within that space, have a team that would come back with a throw away from home. But under normal circumstances, to lose 11 of your regular players uh, should make should cause a lot of problems. But on the day, we were fortunate uh, to be able to come back with something. And it was the worst scenario that we had. Others, you'd have five out, four out, three out, something like that. And uh, there was a stage of the slump where I think in three matches, we, we were struggling with COVID at that time. But uh, from then up until now, I think even the players, the way they handle themselves and the areas they find themselves in and making sure that they prevent uh, situations of, of them uh, getting COVID because we will never know about this thing, but we have done very well over, over probably the last six to seven months in making sure that we don't have too many people that find themselves in that situation. I'm trying now very quickly. Uh, thank you. Uh, morning, everyone. Morning, coach. Uh, you brought in Utabi so good to me. I'd like to ask, how do you see his role within the club? Where, do you, where does he fit in into how Sundowns plays? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Kudumela is a very good football player. That's the first thing that people must know because I've, I've had a lot of questions about Kudumela and uh, I rate him very highly. Uh, at Sundowns, he's got a very big influence uh, that he's going to, to have as an offensive player, because Kutumela can play on the right, on the left as a nine and a 10. And uh, for our pressing schemes is very good in that space. And uh, Kutumela from NFT he has always been very dangerous in front of goals. And we believe he will complement what we have. And he's got an element of directness in his play, uh, very intense, very aggressive to find spaces or to exploit spaces behind the defense. And he can also play between the lines as a 10. Uh, the good thing about him is that he's got a goal against a reinforced defense. He's got a goal behind a defense that defends very high. And that makes him a very important player. And he's got a goal even against a one against one. So it is very important to, to look at such players with, with keen interest. And we've been follow, following him for a very long time. And I don't want to lie to you. I'm very happy to have Kutumela within the team and I'm sure he's going to help the club.